welcomed back to the Tulsa Zoo, Keaton and Gabby here from the education department. And we're here with another week of Zoo School. And we just wanna thank our members for watching and sharing all these videos. We wouldn't be able to do these awesome programs without you. This week for Zoo School, we're going to be celebrating Earth Day all week with Earth Week. And we're going to be focusing on freshwater water systems. So with that, we're going to tell a story about my friend Gabby here. And we're gonna use our imagination with our vase and our sad fish here. It's going to be our local water system. So with our story about Gabby, she one beautiful morning was walking her dogs next to a lovely river. And as we all know, dogs go to the bathroom wherever they want. So of course, her dogs went to the bathroom next to the river, but unfortunately, Gabby didn't pick up her dog poop. And all that dog poop got into the river system and caused extra bacteria, parasites, and nitrates. And next, Gabby was driving her car and she was drinking out of a plastic water bottle. She didn't have a trash can in her car, so she decided to just throw the plastic water bottle out the window. Well, that water bottle rolled into a lake and that plastic water bottle will be there for over 500 years. Gabby was driving her car to her birthday party and her birthday party was at a local park. And at any good birthday party, you have confetti, glitter, and balloons. But unfortunately, after the party was over, Gabby didn't pick up her trash. So all of the trash blew around in the wind and ended up in a stream behind the park. And for her birthday, Gabby got some unique pets. And with those pets, they got bigger and bigger and harder to take care of. So being the animal person that she is, she thought she was doing a good thing by releasing those animals into a local lake. Well, now that lake now has three new species it never had before. And those species are taking up space and resources for those native animals. After her party, Gabby wasn't feeling so good. So she went to the doctor and the doctor prescribed her some medicine. Well, she started feeling better. So she decided not to take the rest of the medicine and she needed to dispose of it. So she flushed it down the toilet. And after she was feeling a little bit better, Gabby decided to do some gardening in her big, beautiful garden. Unfortunately, there were some bugs that were eating her flowers. So Gabby went to the store and got some pesticides. Well, she wanted to make sure all of those bugs were out of her garden. So she used three times the normal amount. And then later on, it rained that day. So she, all those pest, extra pesticides that she used ran off into a water system behind her house. Gabby is a strong, independent woman, so she changes her own car oil. Well, she didn't have a container for the old oil to go into, so that old oil ran down her driveway, leaked into the sewer system, and got into the watershed. Gabby has made choices and mistakes that we have all made before. All of her, she didn't know the consequences to her actions, but she came to the Tulsa Zoo and learned all about conservation. Gabby, why don't you tell us what you learned? So at the Tulsa Zoo, I learned a few things about my past behaviors as a polluter. One of the things I learned that you can do is when you go to change your car oil, it's really important to have a drip pan so all of that old oil can fall into the drip pan and then you can put it in a sealed container and then take it to an auto parts store or a service station where they can properly dispose of it. And then with pesticides, when I'm doing my gardening and I find those really pesky insects, instead of using more than I need, I'll use the recommended amount and check the weather before I put it out to make sure it's not gonna rain anytime soon. An, an alternate pesticide is soapy water is if I didn't wanna use a chemical pesticide. And then the next time I get medicines from a doctor, I'll definitely take them all because that's what you're supposed to do. However, if for some reason that I had any left, I could put them in the container that they came in, put coffee grounds in them or vinegar, seal it, 
cross out my information and throw it in the trash instead of flushing it. And the next birthday party that I have, maybe I'll pick up all my trash instead of letting it blow all over the place and properly dispose of it, either in the trash can or in a recycle bin. And instead of getting unique pets as a gift, I will encourage people to make donations to zoos and aquariums. After that, the next time I'm driving in my car and I have trash, maybe I can put it on the floorboard or in a sack instead of throwing it out the window. And instead of getting one of these plastic water bottles, maybe I could go to the store and buy a reusable water bottle. Lastly, my pet waste. I have a lot of dogs and I want to make sure that I properly pick up their, their waste. So I'll grab some pet waste bags and when they're done, I'll pick it up and I'll dispose of it in the trash and I'll carry extra bags for all my friends. So you can see that our actions do affect the community and the habitat in our watersheds. And instead of looking like this, with just a little bit of change, our watersheds could look like this. So now that I'm an educated consumer, thanks to the Tulsa Zoo, I was able to educate my family, friends, and community, and we were able to make changes to have our watersheds look like this, nice and clear with our happy fish. Because as we know, our actions not only affect us, but other species as well. And one species that we want to introduce you guys today can be affected by our water quality. Oh, an owl probably isn't the animal you were thinking of whenever we were talking about watersheds. But barn owls and other species of birds of prey are actually quite a few fish eaters, in addition to amphibians and even crawfish. So they eat a wide variety of things, and being predators at the top of the food chain, everything that those smaller animals, uh, whenever they live in a watershed like this, that affects our top predators at the top of the food chain. So everything they ingest into them and take into their bodies um, is the same thing that those fish and frogs and crawfish lived in. So it affects our top predators as well. And Squinty here is a barred owl, which is the, one of the larger species of owls we have right here in Oklahoma. And as I said earlier, they eat a wide variety of things. So they're not just rodent eaters. They'll uh, eat all sorts of different items, but that does make them carnivores. And owls are incredible carnivores. So they have super sharp talons on their feet and very sharp beaks that help them be a really good hunter. And owls also have special ears on them that allows them to be a great hunter as well. So they have an ear up here and an ear down here called asymmetrical ears, which allows them to be able to hear even better than we do. But we want to thank you guys so much for watching our first Earth Week video. We hope that you will join us on Tour Tuesday and learn more about water conservation. Thank you so much.